What's going on? It's Suck and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. Now in today's video, I shall be showing you what it was like to play games on the 2020 maximum spec MacBook Air. The full spec for this model that I'm using can be found down below in the description and I have already uploaded a number of different videos in which I've shown what it was like to play games on the entry i3 and the i5 model. Once again links to which can be found down below in the video description or you can click the card in the top right corner to go and view those videos. Also stay tuned to the very end of today's video to see if there were any differences between playing on Windows 10 via bootcamp or straight through Mac OS. Finally, we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers, and if you are new around here, then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified of when I upload any of my new videos. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So first up, let's talk about the games that I played on this machine with Windows 10. So the games that I played were GTA 5, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, Fortnite, Battlefield 5, Apex Legends, Minecraft, CSGO, and finally League of Legends. So I tested these games all at high graphical settings and starting off with this MacBook Air's native resolution of 2560 by 1600, you can see that as you'd expect for a machine without a dedicated GPU, that the frame rates were quite poor. And even with the power of the temp generations, Iris Plus graphics, it still struggled somewhat. Though when compared to the i5 model, I was actually able to get Battlefield 5 to run, whereas with that model, I was not able to do so. Now, when I say run, I mean I averaged about four frames per second, which is absolutely horrible. And it didn't take me long to stop playing this game at these particular settings. Minecraft by far performed the best here, averaging almost 60 frames per second, with League of Legends coming in second with 43 frames per second on average, while Apex Legends, GTA 5, CSGO and Fortnite performed similarly poor, barely being able to reach an average frame rate between 10 to 12 frames per second. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 came in third place, which wasn't too bad all things considered, with 29 frames per second on average, especially when you factor in that I got an average of 25 frames per second when playing the exact same game the exact same way on the entry 2020 MacBook Pro. So I actually managed to get higher frame rates on the MacBook Air over the MacBook Pro. And no, before anyone says, I'm not suggesting anyone that's after a MacBook to play the odd game or here to go and pick a MacBook Air over a MacBook Pro. Of course, the MacBook Pro has got a far efficient cooling system and will stay cooler for longer when compared to the MacBook Air, which after a little while, you'll definitely notice it start to slow down and the frame rate does start to chug up just a slight. But nevertheless, with such low frame rates, most of which were barely playable, I chose to lower the resolution to full HD at this 16 by 10 aspect ratio of 1920 by 1200. At this resolution, Minecraft had an average frame rate of 74 frames per second, and while playing League of Legends, you had an average increase of 16 additional frames, up from 43 to 59 frames per second. At this point, with frame rates higher than 60 frames per second, you have to remember that due to the refresh rate of the built-in display being capped at 60 hertz, that you won't actually feel anything above 60 frames per second. And with Apple touting such improvements with their own Apple Silicon GPU and CPU solutions, will the time come soon when we're actually able to use a MacBook Air to formidably game on? And if so, will we see ProMotion? We may be seeing it on the new iPhones this year, but will we see it in a MacBook over the next coming decade? Who knows? But it's getting to a point now where, you know, 60 frames per second is actually being uh, achieved more often than, uh, than you wouldn't. Now, yes, 100% we probably won't see it in a MacBook Air before we do in a MacBook Pro, but it's definitely something that I'm sure Apple are keeping their eye on. Also, at this resolution, there was pretty much no change in the frame rate that we saw when playing Fortnite, with this game increasing its average by a measly 2 frames per second, now increasing from 10 to 12 frames on average. Battlefield 5 doubles its frame rate from 4 to 8 frames per second, which while it's interesting to see that it's doubling its performance, it performed identically to the i5 model, which is quite underwhelming. 
Considering how much I paid for this machine, its performance here definitely is not the greatest. I mean, £600 of the configuration did go to upgrading the SSD storage, and yes, I could have got better frame rates on a gaming laptop half the price of this machine, but you've still got to remember that this machine is not designed to play any of these titles. Heck, as I've said earlier, it's not even got a dedicated GPU. Black Ops 4 now averaged 34 frames per second and CSGO increased its average from 12 to 21 frames per second. League of Legends and Minecraft are still the top two best performing games averaging 59 and 74 frames per second respectively. Finally, I lowered to standard HD at the 16 by 10 aspect ratio to a resolution of 1280 by 800. Now things here were very interesting. Firstly, Battlefield 5. This game now stunned us with an amazing frame rate on average of around 11. Yes, 11 frames per second, which once again is quite bad and it's actually identical to how this game performed on the i5 model, which shouldn't be much of a surprise as both of these models, both of these CPUs have the G7 graphics. I think you'd have to be insane to genuinely want to do this. Clearly playing a game of this nature on this hardware is going to be a nightmare. And when playing on the entry MacBook Pro, we did get higher frame rates of around 18 frames per second on average which is most likely down to a number of things from a higher TDP of the processor which is found in the MacBook Pro over that found in the air, the larger chassis to accommodate larger fans and the CPU that is directly connected to a heat pipe to further help with the dissipation of heat away from the CPU. It is also worth noting that at this resolution and these settings that Minecraft averaged over 94 frames per second with peaks hitting 117 FPS. League of Legends also averaged over 67 frames per second too. So yes, if you are looking to play games such as Minecraft or League of Legends, then you could quite possibly do so on this machine. Though you will first have to boot camp the machine to run Windows 10 and lower the resolution. So yeah, there are definitely a few compromises, but you can definitely play these games on this machine. Once again, Black Ops 4 and CSGO performed almost identically with a mere three frames separating them on average. And games like GTA 5, Apex Legends, Fortnite, those kind of games performed equally, equally as poor, with neither of these games still being able to eclipse 20 frames per second on average, even at this resolution. Of course, you most definitely will get higher frame rates by lowering the graphic settings, but when you're playing at such lower resolutions already, it just looks a mess. And honestly, you then at that point would not want to play the game at that resolution and at such low graphic settings. So yeah, you can get higher frame rates, but at the end of the day, that trade-off probably isn't going to be worth your while. Now the majority of these heavier graphically intense games are only available on Windows as they utilize the DirectX graphics capabilities, whereas on macOS it's metal. Now with that being said, the selection of games are now going to change, whereas on macOS we'll be playing with Fortnite, CSGO, League of Legends and Minecraft. The same here again, starting off with the native resolution and high graphical settings, now sees Minecraft once again with the highest frame rate on average with 55 frames per second. At this resolution, it was surprisingly very playable and somewhat enjoyable, which is rarely the case. Now while playing this game through Windows 10 will yield higher average frame rates, you'll find that when playing through macOS, you'll be given a more consistent experience. This is as the difference between the higher and lower frame rates on Windows is much larger and thus you will see frames dropping more frequently than when compared to playing through macOS. Also, while playing at this resolution, League of Legends came in with an average of 50 frames per second, which is great to see. Now, when we lower this resolution as we did previously, we now see that Minecraft has an average of almost 80 frames per second. League of Legends, once again at this resolution, was quite enjoyable, with an average of almost 60 frames per second. Also, CSGO was improving throughout, coming in with 42 frames per second while playing at 1280 by 800, which it doubled when compared to its performance and native resolution. 
But perhaps the biggest shock throughout this was Fortnite, which on this hardware, regardless of if it was played on Mac OS or Windows, was the worst performing game. It didn't matter whether it was played on Windows 10 or Mac OS, it couldn't eclipse a frame rate better than 20 on average. Though as I mentioned earlier, when Fortnite was played on Mac OS, it was much more consistent and did not drop frames as much as we saw when playing through Windows 10. It's easy to see by the data as when playing Fortnite at 1280x800 on macOS, we saw a difference between its minimum and maximum and that difference was around 6 frames per second. Whereas when we see that difference while playing through Windows 10, you can see that it's not 6, it's a lot larger than that. We're looking at around 14 frames, which is almost double. In fact, it's more than double. So you can see that while playing through macOS, you may get lower average frame rates, you may actually find that that the gameplay that you have is going to be a lot more consistent. This was also quite interesting to see that Minecraft performed as good as and in most cases exceeded the performance of the entry 2020 MacBook Pro, which uses an 8th generation i5. But as I mentioned, you've got to keep in mind that this machine has a much better cooling system when compared to the MacBook Air. So if you are going to be playing games for a prolonged period of time, then the MacBook Air honestly is not going to be suited for that. I would genuinely opt for the MacBook Pro. And while we have a minute, let's take a look at some graphics benchmarks I've conducted between these different models of MacBook Air. So we can see that there isn't really much of a difference between the i5 and the i7 model. I mean, sure, there's a difference, but you've got to ask yourself, is it worth that additional £150? It's quite interesting to see that you could play games on macOS and get frame rates similar to and in most cases exceed what you'd expect in Windows, but the sheer amount of different games that you will have access to on Windows 10 is vastly superior and I still stand by it that if you are looking to play games that Windows is going to be the better platform you want, that is unless Apple ever want to support Nvidia, which with the Apple Silicon transition happening soon, I doubt we will ever actually see. Also, I'm stood waiting for the day that ProMotion makes its appearance on a MacBook. If it's purely for gaming, then as most of you already know, do not buy a MacBook, unless it's a 16 inch model, but even then, you'd be able to get so much more for your money with a dedicated gaming laptop for over £2,000. In fact, the model that I used in this video was the most expensive custom built to order configuration, costing pretty much the exact same as a 16 inch MacBook Pro. So there you have it, I know a lot of you have been patiently waiting for this one to be uploaded and I thank you for bearing with me. Of course if you have got any video suggestions or anything that you'd like to see tested then be sure to let me know by hitting me up over on my Twitter and Instagram, links to which can be found down below in the video description. If you are new around here then be sure to subscribe clicking the bell icon to be notified of when new videos go live. But once again thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.